it's gotten out of control. And I think the lack of talent really started to catch up to him. Obviously, you got two games left in the season. You know, guys are already starting to shut down a little bit. We've complimented this team all year for playing hard, and they do. But to a certain extent, I mean, you're missing Jared Goff. You're missing Frank Rag now still. No, no TJ Hawkinson. Josh Reynolds, obviously, out with the COVID stuff. Monroe St. Brown stepped up. Like, that's kind of what you're looking for at this point. I mean, you don't want to lose 51 to 29. But at the same time, when you see plays that Amon Ross St. Brown, you know, rushing touchdown, receiving touchdown over 100 yards, he's played absolutely amazing the last five weeks. I mean, the offensive line didn't give up a sack. That's what you want to see. Tim Boyle, I mean, I said the Lions would win 2017. I thought it'd be more of a low-scoring game, but I'm not surprised, man. Tim Boyle, his, his third career start, I think he had three interceptions, and one of those interceptions, it was a, you know, the, the, a, it was a fumble. It picked it up quickly and just threw it right into coverage. He was a little bit panicked, but that's where you're going to get at a guy like Tim Boyle, man. I mean, he's, the guy's just trying to be a backup in the league. I, I didn't really take a whole lot from yesterday. I mean, yeah, like you alluded to already, this defense, a lot of guys trying out, and you know, if anything, I'm not going to sit here and sulk about the loss. If anything, you got a top two overall pick, and now it should be Aiden Hutchinson, Kevon Thibodeau, because we're going to get into the whole, you know, the Jags secure the number one overall pick, and they're probably going to go offensive tackle, but Dan Campbell's on the trajectory we expect. They're probably going to get two wins. Maybe they're not going to win against Green Bay, I don't think, this week. I mean, even if they rest um, Aaron Rodgers, they'll have Jordan Love out there. I, I just, I'll be there at the game. We'll see what happens, but 2-13-1, and one, whatever it is right now, I mean, the well, first year, that's what you expect. I mean, I'm not really too worried about it. We're joined by a very special person, somebody who's dealt with a lot this year. A lot, well, last year, I should say. A lot of trauma. Hadn't witnessed the Lions' victory up until week 13 or 14 of the season. Oh, he's been through a lot. He's witnessed over 20 straight losses. <laughs> We're joined by the Detroit Lions beat reporter for the Woodward Sports Network, Corey Woods. Good morning, Corey. Oh, man, heck of an intro. Yeah, wow. well, you know, people need to know what you suffered, man. Yeah. It's your story. It's my. It's, it's, my, it's, it's your just, story. New year, new you, man. I'm surviving Detroit Lions. It's a tough job, man. <laughs> it's a tough job. Yeah, it, it really is. But man, look, they got blown out. They got shellacked. Thirty-eight-seven. Yeah. I have no problem with it. Yeah, I could nah. care less. I'm not even mad. You saw, you saw Megatron's favorite, one of his favorite receivers, do what he does best. I'm um, kill he, him. And, and, and the thing is, you know, he only had six. Six catches. Six catches and 63 yards, but Just he had three, three touchdowns. touchdowns and looked like – he looked like Megatron. He looked like Devontae Adams. Yeah, actually, I thought that was a better comparison. Nobody could match up with him. Yeah, he, he, Throwing he, the ball while the corner has his back turned, right above the corner's head every time, and it's like just a simple – I'm just going to go up I'm just and get too it. Big, yeah. And yeah. even if the corner turns around, it's a guaranteed catch. If the corner does it, I'm getting pass interference. Yeah. I think, it's, I, it's really unbelievable. To I, th- see. I think you guys just said it best. You know, they have a lot of guys out, and they just got steamrolled by a better team. I mean, regardless of Seattle's record this year, they're still the better team. They still have the better coach. They still have the better quarterback, wide receivers. And then you got Rashad Penny out there playing for a contract. <laughs> they're, um, they're, they're talking about if they're going to bring him back. They have to bring him back. I mean, yeah. you saw what he did yesterday. That was just – I'm just like, dude, what's going on here? I mean, the Lions are going to have to really address that rush defense in the offseason. I mean, granted, they have to address the entire defense as a whole. I mean, their their cornerbacks overachieved all throughout the season. But, I mean, that, they that front line, the line just like, yeah, they, they got, invested significantly they, yeah, in the D-line. They played a rough game last year. Yeah, so they got they – got, the thing is, that's been pretty much most of the season. They've been getting steamrolled in that department. The, yeah. cor- the, the secondary has been fine. You know, the secondary has played good enough to win games. You can upgrade the talent there, but they played good enough to win games. But they've been steamrolled on that front well, Corey, all year long. Going into 2022, here you go. Final game of the year, Green Bay at home. I don't care what happens. They have the number two overall pick. Mm-hmm. So now I'm in off-season mode. Yeah, I'm on vacation. You can't hurt me. They could lose by 100. Not going to affect me. Won't change my mind on anything. I saw what I needed to see against Arizona. Going into next year, how far off am I to expect six, seven wins next year to no, show a sign of progression? That's a reasonable expectation. I mean, given off of what you've seen this year, they got, what, two and a half wins, I guess if you want to say it like that, cause yeah. because, because of the tie. They, but, they can score 20 but, points. But, yeah, but you can, you, can, you can expect six, seven wins. I don't, think that's, I don't think that's asking too much because you got to think about this. They eked out this season with a roster completely devoid of NFL-level talent. This is being, being honest. They're, they have a lot of holes that they need to fill this offseason. So they just go ahead and bring in, you know, 
think it is incrementally better this season. That should mean about three, you know, an extra three or four wins. Especially with, I don't expect the schedule to be as difficult next year. We'll have to wait and see. They do get the NFC East, which, I yeah. mean, depending how crazy yeah. you are as a fan, two to three wins. Yeah. So, and you never know with Dallas. You got the Jets. Too. You never know. So, and you get the AFC East. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so the there, Jets. there are games next year where you can show improvement, and I think. Look, this year, what everyone talk about, Corey? Culture. All right. I gave you the year for culture. You want to build a real culture? Winning does that. Go in football games. And then year three, take the, the next step. Take the Caldwell step. Take the Schwartz step. Go in 10, 11 football games. And everyone will be bought in. I think you guys were really on the nail last week when you said he was on the, on the Jim Schwartz trajectory because that's yeah. pretty much just it. You know, a couple of wins the first season. Then the next season, got a couple more wins. First hey, three years. That, Boom. No, it's honor John Madden with the boom. So, yeah, just that's what you're looking for. It's it's that fourth season, man, because you saw it like ten and six, the playoff appearance after that four and twelve. Well, now you, you start to regress. So, but you don't it's funny see the that. roster did get better, which is why you look right. at coaching. You're like, oh, yeah. you, okay, you peaked year three. What yep. happened? All right, we're gonna give you year five because of what you did for year three, and then you brought in Caldwell, and the rest is history. But right, yeah, man, look, I I really think the Schwartz comparison uh, not only is spot on. You need that to play out that yeah. way. You need this team to play out that way. If you're not a playoff team by year three, what are you doing? Yeah, something's... I mean, they, they, they can be a playoff team by year three. They're going to be adding a lot of talent early in the rounds over these next couple of drafts, so there's no reason mm-hmm. why. I mean, what, in this draft coming up, they're going to be picking... Um, they're going to have three picks in the top 33. Well, yep. top 34. So, yeah. I'm all for it. I'm all for it, Corey. Uh, I do want to get one more question in before we have to go to break with you. Like I said, season's done. Mm-hmm. Regardless of what happens next week, they're picking where they're picking. Their biggest off-season need. If you could address one position, and you could only address it, and I told you that whatever you decided with that position, it would be guaranteed set. It would be a home run. What would it be? Yeah, think carefully. You filling out the edge rusher, or are you taking care of the quarterback for the future? I'm going with the edge rusher. Game wrecker. Going with the edge rusher because right now, I don't think that there is a quarterback worth taking early on. I mean, you want to go third or fourth round, fine. Just go ahead and let this Jared Goff experiment play out. And then in that following draft, I mean, you know what? Maybe in this in this draft, in the third or fourth round, you can get a guy that – you know, you draft him. Slides a little bit. You know, Jared Goff has a slide already. You know, he gets hurt. Throw him out there, see what he has. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, maybe he can be the next bridge quarterback or he can bring him up. But, you know, I don't think quarterback is really a necessity right now. I think that they have other areas that they need to address first before they even think about getting a quarterback. Who knows? Maybe if they if no, none of these quarterbacks impress you over the next couple of years and you don't feel comfortable trotting them out, Maybe work out another short-term type of extension with golf, and then draft a quarterback after that. I mean, who, who knows? The c- scenarios are still endless, but right now they got to address that edge. And I mean, you don't. Hopefully, for the Lions' sake, Aiden Hutchinson goes one, so they can get Thibodeau. I, I honestly, I don't believe, see either edge rusher going one. Uh, yeah, I've, but, I've got that yeah, the that, Bama tackle. The, and you know what? I know, and I know everybody wants the hometown pick of Hutchinson. I looked at both of them, and I'm not going to sit up here and say there's this big of a difference between both of them. I mean, you're going to be getting a damn good player without either one of them. But just from what I've been watching, and not, and not even counting that loss against Georgia, Thibodeau's just – he is a freak of nature. Yeah. And you got to really go look at some of his stuff. He is, Numbers aren't there, but he gets yeah. to the quarterback. And the he, numbers he the aren't there because of what he draws. Right. <laughs> right. That, that's the right. reason why. I mean, Hutchinson has had has been great, but, you know, he also did just rise up really quickly out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Thibodeau is just damn – just Gifted. go watch the film. They've known about him, yep. All right, well, we do got to go to break. 